Then in verse 9 he says, "...and this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment." Now he speaks here that their love might abound in knowledge and in judgment. And the word for judgment is discernment. Now there's more silly thinking today about this word love. Very frankly, I get letters like this. This one came to me from Pompano Beach. And this party writes, Last night I heard your program over radio station here. You sure gave me the surprise of my life as to what you said about the leaders of this nation. You also said that certain evangelists spread damnable heresies. Maybe I heard you wrong. Anyway, doesn't Jesus say, In his holy word, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you. And may I say to you, the Lord Jesus had some very harsh things to say about the religious rulers of his day. He said that you are of your father the devil, and the works of your father you will do. And he even talked about their mother. He says, you're a generation of vipers. In other words, your snake is your mother. I don't think you could be any harsher than that. And I certainly wasn't that extreme. And this part has certainly misunderstood me. But coming up with that little verse, love your enemies, if you want to know the truth, I'm having difficulty loving my friends. Some of them are not lovely, but they're wonderful friends. And we're to love believers. And some of the believers are a little difficult to love. And they are the ones that I think we're to love. Now, Paul says... Let your love abound, but more and more let it abound in knowledge and in all judgment or in all discernment. You be sure who you love. Now, I've prayed for years. When I used to drive in on the freeway to the church in downtown Los Angeles, I would pray. I'd say, Lord, I'm going to meet some new people today. I don't know how to treat them. You do. There are some of them I can help. I can put my arm around them and help them. But some of them, if I put my arm around them, they'll put a knife in my back. Help me to be able to discern the ones I can help, the ones that I should express love to and the ones I shouldn't. Your love is to be expressed with discernment and with real judgment, by the way, and with real knowledge. Don't run around and say today you love everybody because if you say that, You are one of these do-gooders that we read about. This old boy had been going to missions for years. He got tired of hearing that. He needed to hear the Word of God that he was a sinner that needed to be saved. And then he becomes a child of God through faith in Christ. We need to be very careful today about who we love, my friend. That's what Paul is saying to these. I saw this bumper sticker the other day. be honest with you, I didn't like it. It says, love your neighbor, but be careful. May I say to you, it was meant the wrong way, I'm sure. But I would say it's good if you'll take it the right way. Be careful. There are some neighbors that will put a knife in your back. And there's some neighbors, oh, they'll be wonderful to you. And I would like for you to note another example of this. And I lift it out of my own personal experience. When I first went to downtown Los Angeles... I learned that every Sharpie took advantage of a new preacher, and therefore the individual would try, you know, get to him, shall I say. In fact, every kind of a ruse that was imaginable. And I used to warn new members of the staff that that's what would happen to them for the first few weeks until they learned how to deal with folk in a downtown church in a great city filled with all kinds of people. Well, this happened to me one Sunday morning. One of the personal workers came to me and said, there's a man that came forward and I've been dealing with him and he wants you to talk to him. He wants you to deal with him. Well, you know, I thought, my, isn't that wonderful? He wants the pastor to talk to him. So I went, sat down by the side of him. He was not dressed too well, but he seemed very interested. And I got my Bible and I gave him the verses that you do for salvation. My, he just, he had to take my Bible and read one or two of them. My, he seemed interested. So when I finished presenting the plan of salvation, I asked him if he had really accepted Christ. And he had. 
great crocodile tears came down his eye. We got down on our knees and prayed. And then we got up, and I made the mistake of asking him a question. I should, from then on, have kept quiet. But I said, by the way, how are you getting along? Well, you know, that could mean most anything. Well, he told me. He said, well, he says, you know, Dr. McGee said, I don't want to, you know, to bother you with my trouble. Oh, and I encouraged him. I said, oh, yes, go ahead. And he said, it's embarrassing for me to tell you this. Well, I was very naive then. I was a babe in the wood. And he said, you know, I have been stopping down here at a certain hotel. I hadn't heard of the hotel before, but found out later it was more or less of a flop house. And he said, they have my suitcase. And I don't have money to pay my bill, and I can't get my suitcase. And I want to be leaving town and I am so distressed, I can't get a job. Well, you know, I then asked him the question, how much did he owe? He said, seven dollars. Well, now, you've just led a man supposedly to the Lord, and all he needs is seven dollars. So what are you going to do? Well, you're going to give him seven dollars. So I gave him seven dollars, and he thanked me profusely and said he would pay me back, you know, and he left. And I went out feeling good. By that time, everybody had left. My wife was waiting in the car. I got in the car, and she wanted to know what was the delay, and I told her. And I just felt, you know, I felt good. I was just oozing goodness in every direction. I told her what I'd done. I'd given this man $7. Well, she was a little skeptical, but not too much. Thought it was a good thing. And so I suppose it was two or three weeks later, I picked up the morning paper, and in the morning paper was a picture of a man that looked very familiar. I looked at it carefully, and sure enough, it was that man. And the fact of the matter is, it was a good picture of him. And then I read the item underneath. He'd been arrested, by the way. And the thing he'd been arrested on, he was a vagrant. And he had been in Los Angeles for six months, had not worked, but had lived pretty well. And he told in this article, he's interviewed by a reporter, of how he lived. He said, you know, I just go to a church and talk to the pastor and tell him my story, and they always help me. And fact of the matter is, he says, you know, preachers are the biggest saps they are in the world. You know, I guess the fellow was right. He was right in my case. That fellow had my seven dollars. And I called Dr. Bob Schuler, who was then at Trinity Methodist Church. I asked him if he had had him. Yo, yes, said he'd been forward down at his church. I said, did you give him seven dollars? He said, oh, no. And he knew me pretty well. He said, Vernon, I've been in downtown Los Angeles a long time. And I know this crowd. He said, you are new, they are working you. He said, you better be careful. So I went back to Philippians 1, 9. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all discernment. So from then on, friends, no one ever got to me for $7 to get their suitcase out of the hotel in fact, I've had them tell some, oh, terrible stories. In fact, at Christmas time, they'd come out for a funeral to bury their dear dead mother. And they had just spent everything at the funeral, and they couldn't get back home, and they were hungry. And I just looked at them and grinned, you know, and told them, if you're hungry, we'll sure buy you a meal and they were taken back by that. Many of them found out they weren't hungry all of a sudden. Others actually, I guess, were, but all they got from me was a meal. Why? Because, my friend, let me say this very carefully today, all we should express love, and certainly believers should love one another, but you better do it with a little knowledge and a great deal of discernment. That's what Paul says. That's what the Word of God says today. Now, don't tell me, as this party has in this letter that they sent to me 
that Jesus said that we're to love everybody. Now, he made it very clear in his life that there were some folk that were the children of the devil, and their mother happened to be a snake. And he didn't express much love for them. He died for them, but they would have to take a step of faith toward him. Now, the Bible love does not slop over on every side. I think we need to recognize that in this day when there's so many silly things that are being said today by a lot of sentimental people that talk it, but I don't see them producing it today. Now, there are some people you and I should lavish our love upon. And there's some folk, my friend, that we need to be very careful about. 